Yeah, Roger, Roger. 100% copy. Delta Sugar 4, Alpha Kilo Pop on November 7, Alpha Papa Whiskey returning. Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. In this video, we're going to be talking about the new GD88 from Radiology. Now, I've had the GD88 for a few weeks now and wanted to spend some time learning its features before making a video. And I'm pleased to report that this radio is pretty darn good. In short, this is a dual band 2 and 70 digital DMR and analog handheld transceiver, which not only has some great specification, but it also looks pretty cool too. Now in the box, we find all the usual things we would expect. However, what did stand out to me was the base charger. Now this allows for the radio to be placed on charge while charging a second battery at the same time. Also, the user manual is in English and very well written. However, I would recommend to download the extended manual from the Rady Oddity website as that covers even more details about its features. Now, on the top of the radio, we find a channel change encoder along with an on and off and volume control. A programmable button in orange is also available. Now, what is interesting here is that the antenna connection is a proper SMA female. None of this reverse SMA business going on here like we often see on the cheaper HTs. Now the front of the GD88 has a color LCD along with function buttons and the numeric keypad. Now this does have an extremely professional feel and it looks really well laid out. On the left side of the radio, we find three push buttons. The middle button is the PTT and the top and lower buttons are programmable within software allowing you to choose which function they perform. On the right side of the radio, we find a little rubber flap, which once opened exposes the speaker mic connections. Now, as with other radios, this also doubles up as a programming port for use with a USB programming cable. Well, the next segment of this video features a warning. Please get Kleenex tissues ready and on hand. So before powering on, let's take a quick look at the specifications. So first off, we have a 3000 milliamp hour battery with built-in battery saving feature. Radiodity suggests that the GD88 can run up to 48 hours on standby with a single charge, 15 hours of continuous working time under analog and 23 hours under digital mode. As shown previously, the GD88 comes with a unique desktop charger, allowing you to charge your radio and a spare battery at the same time. Four programmable buttons are provided and programmed within software, useful for allocating frequently used functions such as zone change, power levels, and disconnect contacts when using digital hotspots. The GD88 also comprises of a built-in 36 mm diameter large speaker, which provides advanced voice processing technology to deliver a crystal clear sound even in noisy environments. Surprisingly, the GD88 also has a 54 IP rating, protecting against contamination and limited amounts of dust and other particles. IP54 also protects from water sprays in all directions, but remember, this is not submersible. Now, this is where it gets extremely interesting. We have seen crossband repeat in other radios before, but as the GD88 supports DMR as well as analog, the GD88 can crossband digital to analog modes and vice versa. You can even crossband on the same band, whether it's analog to analog, digital to analog, or digital to digital. The next crazy feature is being able to repeat on the same frequency. So how does that work? Now, in my opinion, this is kind of cool, and the way it works is that you have to use DMR and both time slots. So DMR works with either time slot one or time slot two. Now this is a generic feature and requirement of DMR, especially when using repeaters. The GD88, however, can listen on say time slot one and then retransmit that received signal on time slot two, all of which are on the same frequency. The GD88 also has built-in GPS as standard. This can be used to either show your coordinates or use the built-in APRS feature. Now, not only does the GD88 support digital APRS through DMR, but also has analog APRS transmitting AFSK at 1200 bits per second. So let's turn the radio on and take a look at the screen and see how it sounds on digital. 
Now, as you will notice here, the display can also show the contact information of the person talking. The GD88 currently supports up to 300,000 digital ham contacts stored within its onboard memory. That's all loaded onto the radio via the software. I'll show you that shortly. The GD88 has two VFOs, both of which can be used at the same time, even on the same band. Now VFO A at the top is currently tuned to my hotspot, receiving on 438.800 MHz. VFO B is tuned to a local analog repeater on 433 MHz. Now watch how I change the PTT control to VFO B and press the PTT button to open the repeater. My son is 15 and my kids, man, I don't know, they smart like hell, but they're not like, um, you know, you you know, you got to keep telling them to do the same thing over and over and over again, man. But I mean, as far as their, their schoolwork, man, they... You can still hear the digital QSO on VFO A and the Morse ident from the repeater on VFO B. you also notice that the audio from VFO A did not cut out when I pressed the PTT button. In my opinion, that's pretty cool. Same band transmit and receive on a handheld radio. That's pretty nice. <laughs> Well, some things don't change, right? Uh, you know, the kids are really, really bright. You know, they have that. So you've already seen how clear and nice looking the display looks while in use. Well, it doesn't end there. The menu system is icon driven, making it quick and easy to locate the setting you want to change. Changing features like Vox, Contacts, Power, APRS, Channel Editing can easily be achieved through the menu system. I think it's quite important, especially in this day and age of technology, that things are made easy for the user. Although each menu section may drill down to further menus, this is sometimes not avoidable due to the type of features available. However, in my opinion, having the menu icon helps to get to the right area of the menu quickly. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Transmitting on 145.200 M0 DQW testing. So that little example was me transmitting on 145.200 on another radio. And then the GD88 was retransmitting that transmission on 145.450. Now this test was performed at quite close range. So it would be interesting to see how the transmitting side affects the sensitivity of the receiving side especially as they are only a couple of hundred kilohertz apart. Normally, cavity filters would be required for such rejection. Maybe I'll make another video if you guys are interested, just on the cross-band and same-band repeat feature of the GD88. Let me know down in the comments below if you'd like to see that. Juste pour dire un petit, un petit bonjour là, et puis, euh, et puis j'espère que tout, tout va bien à la réunion. En ce moment, on a de l'orage et tout. Okay, I can't speak French, so not sure what's being said there, but this is an example of VFO A on the GD88 receiving DMR Talk Group 91 via my MMDVM hotspot on 438.800 MHz, and then retransmitting it on VFO B as analog FM on 145.200. Now, if I was to key up on the analog radio there on the right, my audio would be routed to Talk Group 91 through my GD88 as digital DMR. Now, that's pretty cool, right? So, as one last little test to show you, let's take a look at the output power from the radio. On 2 meters at 145.500, we see an output power of just over 6 watts. If we switch to VFO A, where I have a 70 centimeter analog repeater set, we see an output of about 7.5 watts at 433 MHz. Now just to point out, this is a freshly charged battery. Once again, Delta Sierra Po, America Kilowatt, Papa is my call sign. How are you? And uh, uh, I'm very happy to meet you. Uh, thank you for coming to uh, take my call. Uh, my name is Park. 
Now the last thing to glance at is the CPS, the software used to program the GDATA. This of course is a free download from the Radi Oddity website. Now programming the DMR side of things is pretty normal, such as RX group lists and zones. However, unlike other DMR software, you have to program each channel within each zone. Now this is instead of one channel section where you can drag channels into multiple zones. Now as the GD88 supports up to 300,000 ham contacts, there is a dedicated area for where you can import a CSV file. Now this is quite easy to do as you can download the CSV file from the Radio ID website. However, you will need to adjust some of the columns within Excel or OpenOffice before you can import the file. Please refer to the example import files that get installed or look in the extended manual for the CSV header format. Once imported, you can choose to have the call sign and their location shown or just their call sign. It's easily selected by using this option here. Well, there we go, guys. The Radi Oddity GD88 dual band analog and DMR handheld radio. Now, after spending some time with this radio, I found it to be very good. It's a real pleasant experience using this radio. Now, if you guys own one, then let me know what you think of it. As I understand, the firmware in this radio is the first version, so I wonder what fixes or new features will come out in the coming weeks. Until the next video, take care, stay safe, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.